So, The Hidden Fortress I always described as being the perfect adventure film. In fact, it is the blueprint for what most adventure films have. You got the heroic strong lead character, in this case it's played by Toshiro Mifune. There's also the princess, and you could also add that she's a strong female. I know a lot of newer movies like to include that or just say they have that. And you got the lesser characters that prop up the main character, making him stronger. And they also add some comic relief. What was interesting is when I decided to watch this film again, I noticed something different. And I always liked that in films. If I could watch it multiple times and always get something new out of it, I think it's... A really great movie then. What I noticed is that the two peasant characters in this, Tahe and Matakishi, they are really the main protagonists in this. When you watch it, you notice that they're in the entire film from start to finish. You don't see Toshiro Mifune in the beginning. And this really makes this film different because usually you get the strong hero, you know, he's usually the main protagonist. But in this case, we see him through the eyes of the two peasants. And I never really noticed that before. And I've actually heard that some people actually get annoyed at these characters. And I could kind of see why, because they're in the entire film and they do a lot of stupid things. Like sometimes it's unbelievable how stupid they are. But these are also the characters that we see grow the most. They pretty much start out as greedy, you know, they're only out for themselves. And midway, they're pretty much still like that. And actually, even in the final act, they're still like that. <laughs> but eventually, they come around and they do the right thing. But I've never really found them annoying, and I've seen this movie a lot. Every time I watch it though, I'm always laughing at what they're doing. And I feel like they really make this film a lot more fun than it would have been without them. I think it's funny just how their greedy actions just bring misery to themselves. In the very beginning of the film, we see them and they're worn out looking, they're in rags and complaining. And we find out that they had this stupid plan to rob the goods from a battlefield. But when they showed up, they were mistaken for the losing army, and so they were forced to dig graves for all the bodies. And I don't know why, but I just find the patheticness of this just really funny. In fact, they even kind of laugh at it, and I laugh at them laughing at it. <laughs> But this was always a film that, when I heard about it, I was never really interested in it. In fact, it was one of the later films I've seen by Kurosawa. And I think it's because when I heard that it was just an adventure film, I kind of mistook that for it being a cheap movie. But in reality, this is anything but a cheap average adventure film. It's really just a grand film. There's just big scenes of armies and you know armies being overdrawn by prisoners and it just has an amazing amount of extras in this and it's also just filled with such beautiful cinematography everything i see looks amazing and i really love the set for the hidden fortress itself i think it looks like what a hidden fortress would look like tucked away in the mountains you even get this extended joke where we see the two peasants and they're climbing this hill and the scene goes on for a few minutes and when they finally make it to the top 
Mifune's already in the fortress and he's yelling at them. And after a few scenes go by, we get the payoff and we find out that there is actually an easier passage that they could have taken instead of going all the way up the hill. And I know it's a gag that we've seen many times, but who knows, it really could have originated here. But the biggest thing that surprises me about this film is just the incredible pacing. And I would just love to just show this film to all those people that think old movies are all boring and slow paced. This movie moves almost at lightning speed. It moves very much like a modern film does. There's no real extended dialogues, you know, that you get a lot with in samurai films where they're just sitting around talking. There's really none of that. It's all movement and action. Something Kurosawa does really well. And I decided to watch this film this time with my wife for the first time. And even she was surprised at just how fast moving it was and interesting. And when you're used to a lot of samurai films and you decide to watch this, you really do notice how different it is. It feels very much western influenced. And I do know that Kurosawa was influenced by American films. And unlike the many, you know, artistically obscure products of Japanese cinema like Ozu, this and many of Kurosawa's other films are entirely accessible to a Western audience. And after all, his primary inspiration was American films, especially that of John Ford. Kurosawa and the Western just make a beautiful pairing. The director's movies were influenced by early entries in the genre. Then in turn, it became the blueprint for 60s and 70s editions of westerns. Without Kurosawa, you would not have A Fistful of Dollars or The Magnificent Seven, and probably a lot of other films you want to get. And that's mainly why I think that this is the best movie for newcomers of the samurai genre, or even just if you're new to Kurosawa, I recommend starting here. And that's for its excellent pace and just the pure familiar nature that it has. This film also has one of my favorite duels of all time. And this is when Mifune's character duels another general. In fact, I included it in my top 10 samurai duels video, you could check that out. Mifune's character in this is a legendary general that everyone knows about. So for anyone to duel him would be an honor. And what I mainly like about this duel is just the realism of it. You know, you don't get any doubles. It's the real actors doing the fight. And for once, we get a duel with spears. And it's something you never really see ever again. I just think that it's an amazing scene. And originally, I thought that this scene didn't really have anything to do with the story. But then I realized that it does serve a purpose later on. But still, even if it didn't have a purpose, it's still awesome. I would say that this is probably number three in director Akira Kurosawa's most influential films. I'll put it behind Rashomon and The Seventh Samurai. And unlike Kurosawa's other better known films, for some reason, The Hidden Fortress has not been remade into other films. But I could also say that aspects of this film are definitely found in numerous other films for decades. The most known one is that of Star Wars. George Lucas openly admitted that the droids C-3PO and R2-D2 are based on the Hidden Fortress's characters of Tahe and Matakishi. Uh, the one thing that really struck me about Hidden Fortress and I was really intrigued by was the fact that the story was told from the two lowest characters. I decided that that would be a nice way to tell the Star Wars story, which is to take the two lowliest characters, um, as Kurosawa did, and tell the story from their point of view, which in the Star Wars case is the two uh, droids. But when you compare this to Star Wars, I noticed something pretty interesting. The strong lead character of Toshiro Mifune is actually nowhere to be seen in the original Star Wars. There's not really one strong lead in that film. 
Han Solo doesn't really fit that. And of course, neither does Luke. But I just thought that was interesting that, you know, in the original Star Wars, you didn't really get that strong lead. There's many period piece Asian action epics that draw inspiration from the Hidden Fortress. You definitely see the whole, you know, legendary hero protecting an outspoken princess a lot. And even the animation master Miyazaki has used many elements of the Hidden Fortress, especially in Princess Mononoke. The Hidden Fortress also just features an undisguised element of social commentary. And this really echoes the age-old theme of the Prince and the Palper. As the story goes, it forces a princess to come face to face with the daily lives suffered by members of the lower classes. For Western viewers, this is probably a secondary aspect. But it is much more significant for Japanese audiences who are probably more aware of historical class distinctions within society. The Hidden Fortress takes place in a wartime feudal Japan. The two peasants who were the main characters, Tahe and Madakishi, they have escaped from a prisoner of war camp and they're heading home when they encounter the legendary general played by Toshiro Mifune. The general himself is pretty wise, so he's able to use their greed to make them do what he wants. And he does this by indicating just where the large amount of gold is. This persuades the two to join him, and they convince the princess to disguise herself as a mute. And this is because her manner of speech indicates that she's of royalty, and it would give her disguise away. And they're also transporting 200 pieces of gold that was hidden in these hollowed out logs. The group must now overcome obstacles as they escort the princess across enemy territory. The Hidden Fortress just represents the perfect combination of comedy and adventure. It has it all. And as always in Kurosawa's more early work, the screen is once again dominated by Mifune. Mifune really is just a legendary actor, and he's very much capable of giving a deep, multi-layered performance, but for some reason Kurosawa would always just use him as more as his star quality than his acting ability. Mifune commands attention when he's on the camera. He's a magnet for the eyes. You can't ignore him. He's just an icon that towers above everyone else in the film. And there's one scene that I really just feel his power in, and it's surprisingly not a fighting scene. Instead, it's just this simple shot where we see the girl that they picked up on their adventure. She's walking back to the hiding spot, and this was after she found out about their true identity. You know, that Yuki is a princess and Makabe is a legendary general. Makabe, you know, Mifune then comes marching down and he just looks huge and strong. And he just snatches one of the vegetables that she is carrying. He bites it and then he just walks away without even acknowledging her. And I don't know why, but for some reason you just feel this unstoppable power in him. And this is just the incredible ability of Mifune. And here he's of course playing just an honor-bound superhero samurai that's protecting his princess. Mifune isn't really expected to show characteristics beyond just being a strong samurai. And maybe that's just the one flaw of this film. Maybe, you know, he could have been a deeper character. The supporting cast is also just well suited, you know, especially for the material. But it all comes down to them just working in Mifune's shadow. Mm -hmm. 
The Hidden Fortress is actually Kurosawa's first venture into widescreen cinematography. And he just uses every millimeter of that frame. He creates just such beautiful compositions. They stretch from one side of the screen to the other. Not only is it an injustice to watch The Hidden Fortress in any non-widescreen format, but it's also impossible, and it should remain that way. The action just moves across the entire screen constantly. The Spear Duel is just a perfect example of a sequence that could not be captured in the same way if it wasn't in the widescreen. The visual component of The Hidden Fortress should never be underestimated. It was groundbreaking. Even now viewing it, it just comes across as just so impressive. What's kind of surprising is that many critics consider this to be one of Kurosawa's lesser films. But after many careful viewings, I highly disagree with this. I think it's amongst his best. And it's just a movie I think everyone should start with. I think it's also the movie to see if you're new to Japanese cinema. You know, this came in between Drone of Blood and Yojimbo. This film represents a confident filmmaker, and this was at the height of his ability. By introducing comedy in this grand adventure, and just telling the story from the lesser character's perspective, not to mention just the modern pacing, this all makes this film just very unique. And it's impressive by today's standards. When you watch it, it just feels so... so modern. It doesn't feel like it was filmed in the 50s. And when you compare it to other, you know, feudal Japan epics, this just comes across as so different. This is a masterpiece, and I think it deserves more credit than it's often given. It's more than just that movie that Lucas said inspired Star Wars. This is a movie that stands on its own. And I highly recommend that everyone watches it. So if you're looking to watch the film, you know, I definitely recommend buying it. I recommend the Criterion Blu-ray, at least until it comes out on 4K. Anyway, thanks for watching the entire video. Please subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. You can also check out my Discord. And like always, just thanks for watching.